Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Bill. We're going to be in the In the Labyrinth, the Fantasy Trip book. Um, we're going to be looking at Fine Weapons. This is a continuation of the combat rules. This is the Fine Weapons and Armors rules. And by the looks of it, I'll be doing a little bit of reading. So, let's see what the rules are for Fine Weapons and Armor. A person who has a master armor or talent can make a sword, polearm, hammer, mace, or axe, but no other weapon, so well that it does extra damage, or effectively increases its user's dex, or both. A dagger may do extra damage, but not increase dex. This is not magic, just a very good craftsmanship. A weapon could have bonus for both for being well made and for magic. If it has, or if it was made carefully and then enchanted. Good worksmanship can give a weapon such a good balance that it gives its user a plus one dex, never more than a plus one. A cutting weapon can also be made of such good metal that it does either one or two extra HP of damage. So one or two extra points of damage. Multiply a weapon's cost by 10 if it does one extra uh, damage, and by 20 if it does two extra damage. Multiply its cost by 10 if it gives the user a plus one dex. These costs multiply. A weapon which adds one to the dex and does plus two damage costs 200 times as much as an ordinary one. And that would also compensate the crafter for the time it would take to make such a weapon. A finely made weapon which does extra damage is also less likely to break because it is superior metal. When a break weapon spell is used or a break result rolled on the dice, roll one die. If the weapon does plus one damage, a roll of a one, two, or three means the weapon was not broken but was dropped instead. If the weapon is plus two to damage, it is merely dropped on a roll of one through five and breaks only on a six. A master armorer can also make fine plate armor. This is plate armor specifically tailored to the wearer. It hampers his movements much less than regular plate, so his dex is only minus four rather than standard minus five for plate. A suit of fine plate costs 5,000 uh, silver, which is the currency. So if you were doing this using D&D &D currency, it'd be 5,000 gold. Uh, if you should come into possession of a suit of fine plate made for someone else, it will be only as good as a regular plate for you. The fit won't be perfect. But any master armor or shop will, uh, will pay 3,000 silver for it in order to study it and eventually fashion the pieces to fit other customers. To find the time it will take a master armor to make any of these things, divide its cost by 200 silver. And this is the time in weeks between your order and the delivery. Fine plate must be paid for in advance and you must stay near the shop in order to come in weekly for a fitting. So in other words, during downtime when you're not adventuring, assuming the downtime's long enough, you should stay close by so that way you can go for regular fittings. Or your adventure should not take you further than a couple days outside of town so you could come back every week for a fitting. To, to find the days it takes for an ordinary armorer to make something, divide its cost by 150 silver. Note that he cannot make fine weapons or fine plate. A, the regular armorer cannot make those. That makes sense. Neither an armor nor master armor can work in silver without also possessing the goldsmith talent, but a master armor or goldsmith can make fine silver weapons and armor. Note that extra cost of silver weapons does not mean it takes 10 times as long to make. It takes no longer to forge something out of silver than it would to manufacture its iron or steel counterparts. So even if you were doing the fine weapons or armor that are multiplied with a total of like a plus three weapon, well, plus two damage, plus one dex, well-made weapon was like 200 times. 
the cost, you would then also multiply by the silver cost, but the silver cost does not add to the time to make it. Uh, so that makes a lot of sense. I believe that is the end of it. Yeah, that is the end of that one. So, I would allow, which is not in these rules, I would house rule in that you can make fine armor for anyone. And it looks like you would have to look at the armor, which should be in the previous chapter. You'd have to look at the armor for fine plate and plate armor. Okay, so plate armor to become fine plate is a 10 times multiplier increase in cost. So if, say you wanted to have uh, fine leather armor, I would allow it. Uh, it would lower your dex penalty by one. It, that's the only thing that the fine armor quality would give you from my house rule. But it would cost 10 times as much whatever that is on the table. And then that calculation of takes 150 silver to, for a week's worth of um, progress would still apply. Or the 200 if they were master work. Uh, master armorers, which they'd have to be to, to do it anyways. Um, so you could have a fine chain mail, which is minus three decks here. Uh, that would cost you 2,000 instead of 200 silver, and that would change the minus three dex penalty to a minus two dex penalty. So, and then these fine bonuses would stack with magical bonuses. So let me know if these rules were clear enough to you. Um, let me know what you think about them in the comments below. Until we all game again, guys.